some good men are in trouble, or some bad guys do not receive punishment. Being Christians, how do you face these unfair issues? Let's turn to the page of Second Kings, chapter six, verse eight to twenty-three, and see what Bible God's word is teaching us. The passage mentions the man of God, Prophet Elisha, prayed to God to open someone's eyes two times. So today we will divide the passage into two parts. Let's look into Second Kings chapter six, verse eight to seventeen. Verse eight to seventeen. Now the king of Aram was at war with Israel. After conferring with his officer, he said, "I will set up my camp in such and such a place." The man of God sent word to the king of Israel, "Beware of passing that place, because the Aramians are going down there." So the king of Israel tracked on the place indicated by the man of God. Time and again, Elisha warned the king so that he was on his guard in such places. This enraged the king of Aram. He summoned oh, his officers and. Demand them. Tell me, which of us is on the side of the king of Israel? None of us, my lord, the king," said one of his officers. But Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the every words you speak in your bedroom. Oh, so find out where he is," the king ordered, "so I can send men to capture and capture him." The report came back. He is in Dothan. Then he sent horses and chariots and a strong force there. They went by night and surrounded the city. When the servants of the man of God got up and went out earlier, early in、uh, the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh no, my lord! What shall we do? The first asked. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elijah prayed, "Open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see." Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked and saw the hill full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah. In verse seventeen, Prophet Elijah prayed for opening his servant's eyes, and this is the first key point. God protests. The righteous, God protests the righteous. Why did Elisha want to open his surface eyes? At that time, they were surrounded by a warm army. First eight, first eight. Now the king of a warm was at war with Israel. After conferring with his officers, he said, "I will set up my camp in such and such a place." The king of Aram wanted to lie in ambush and strike the army of Israel. This is very common in a war. However, his strategy did not work. Verse nine to ten. Verse nine to ten. The man of God sends word to the king of Israel: Beware of passing that place, because the Aramians are going down there. So the king of Israel checked on the place indicated by the man of God. I made a gang. He also warned the king so that he was on his guard in such places. The man of God was Elisha. Elisha told the place of the ambush to the king of Israel. The scripture describes he was on his guard in such places. It means the kings did not avoid the strike of Arab only, but also attacked the Arab army at those places, and it happened several times. For this, the king of Arab summoned his officers, verse eleven to fourteen. This arranged the king of Arab. He summoned his officers and demanded of them, "Tell me." Which of us is on the side of the king of Israel? None of us, my lord the king," said one of the officers. But Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, tells 
the king of Ismail, that every verse you speak in your bedroom. Go find out where he is, the king ordered, so I can send men and capture him. The report came back, he is in Dawn, that he sent horses and chariots and a strong force there. They went by light and surrounded the city. The strategy was seen full, so the king of Aram was very angry and thought there was a spy in his army. However, one of his officers told the king that Elisa knew all details of his strategy and had told this to the king of Israel. After knowing this, the king of Aram sent the army to Dothan to capture Elisa. Verse 15, verse 15, when the servants of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh no, my lord, what shall we do? The servants asked. Dothan had no city wall, so the servants could see the city was surrounded. In NASB and King James Version, Oh, my lord, is translated into, alas, my master. He asked Elisha what they shall do, but in his eyes, he saw the difficulty only, and he thought the difficulty could not be overcome. However, verse 16 to 17, don't be afraid, the prophets answer, those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elijah prayed, open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah. Although they were surrounded by a warm army, they were full of horses and chariots of fire around Elisa. In fact, God protected Elisa. These fire horses and chariots could not be seen by just by our eyes physically. Elisa prayed for opening the surface eyes to let him see. Therefore, sometimes we should observe God's protection by spiritual sign. My son is two years old. He goes to bed early. It's around 9 p.m. And my wife and I don't go to bed so early. How can we watch him when he sleeps at the bedroom alone? For this, we have installed an IP cam at the bedroom which is collect with Wi-Fi. Therefore, no matter where we are, as living room, kitchen, even bathroom, we can see our son. If something happens, we will know immediately. When my son was too young, he did not understand what IP cam is. But now, as he is growing up, he understands that when he sleeps at night, his father still keeps the eyes on him in a way he cannot see. Being believers, we have been justified through faith, and we are the children of God. It keeps us and protects us always, and it is not in Bible. However, sometimes, we might see some good believers were in this trend. It seems God did not keep them and had forgotten them. No, in fact, the protection of God sometimes may be obvious, sometimes may be just like the IP cam, cannot be seen by our, our eyes physically. As we grow spiritually and have a close relationship with God, we will have this spiritual observation to see God is protecting us. Therefore, when troubles come, just as Elisha said, don't be afraid. Pray to God to open our eyes 
the urge to see his potential is much more powerful than the difficulties. So, under the protection of God, how did Elisha face the Aram army? Let's look into 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 18 to 23. Verse 18 to 23. As the army came down to at him, Elisha prayed to the Lord, strike his army with violence. So he struck them with violence. As Elisha had asked, Elisha told them, This is not the world and this is not the city. Follow me, and I will lead you to the man you are looking for. I took them to Samaria. After they entered the city, Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men so they can see. Then the Lord opened their eyes, and they looked, and there were they, uh, and there they were in Samaria. When the king of Israel saw them, he asked Elisha, Shall I kill them, my father? Shall I kill them? Do not kill them, he answered. We kill those who have captured with your own sword or bow. Set food and water before them so that they may eat and drink and then go back to their master. So he prepared a great feast for them. And after they had finished eating and drinking, he sent them away and they returned to their master. So the bands of Aram stopped raiding Israel's territory. This is the second key point. God has mercy on the wicked. God has mercy on the wicked. Firstly, we should clarify who the wicked was in the passage and how wicked he was. The wicked was the king of Aram and his army also represent him. In the Bible, there are two types of wicked. One is the people who don't know the Lord. Another one is the people who know the Lord but don't believe in him. The king of Awam was the second time. In verse 12, his officers had told him that the prophets told his strategy to the king of Israel. So it was the work of the Lord. However, the king of Awam decided to stand as the opposite side to the Lord. He sent his army to capture Elisha. Verse 14 describes the army was horses and chariots and a strong force. Horses and chariots were the best equipment for war at that time. Strong force means the army which was well trained. They went by the light, so it was a way. The king of Aram tried to use all his resources and all his ways to capture the prophet, to fight against the law. So, since Elisha was halted by the horses and chariots of fire, why did the Lord not order them to attack the army? Obviously, the Lord didn't want to destroy this army, so he saved it in the other way. It was based on God's mercy. Verse 18 to 19. Verse 18 to 19. As the enemy came down toward him, Elisha prayed to the Lord, strike this army with violence. So he struck them with violence, as Elisha had asked. Elisha told them, This is not the road, and this is not the city. Follow me, and I will lead you to the man you are looking for. And he led them to Samaria. Elisha. Use the word finest. However, properly, they did not become by really because they could walk from Dorman to Samaria. It took around 15 kilometers. So, this is a kind of visual confusion. Just like Genesis chapter 19, verse 11, the people wanted to strike the door of Lord but they could not find the door. When they arrived in Samaria, the capital of Israel, verse 20 to 23, verse 20 to 23, after they entered the city, Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men so they can see. Then the Lord opened their eyes, and they looked, 
and there they were inside Samaria. When the king of Israel saw them, he asked Elias, Shall I kill them, my father? Shall I kill them? Do not kill them, he answered. Will you kill those who have captured with your own soul or bow? Set food and water before them so that they may eat and drink and then go back to their master. So he prepared a great feast for them. And after they had finished eating and drinking, he sent them away and they returned to their master. So the best of Aram stopped waiting is well told. Let's interpret it through the will of the army. When Elisha prayed for opening their eyes, what did they see? They saw they were in the city of their enemy, and they were surrounded. They would be killed or become captured, the captives. However, Bible doesn't record it, but records that the king of their enemy prepared a great feast for them. After they had finished eating and drinking, they could go back to their home. This army was the enemy of the Lord, but they did not receive punishment instantly. And they got some benefits, what were unexpected. It was because of the mercy of the Lord. After experiencing this unworthy grace, the scripture mentions, so the bands from Aram stopped raiding Israel territory. Now the king of Aram had a new understanding of the law. For the grace and mercy of the law, he gave his response so he did not attack Israel for a long time. Some people may think it's not fair that the enemy of God and get the grace from God. It is based on the sovereignty of God. God has mercy on whom he wants to have mercy. As 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9 mentions, He, he means the law. The law is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. However, God doesn't just show tolerance and mercy, He is also the righteous God. The second half of chapter 6 and chapter 7 records, Aram attacked Israel again later, and chapter 8 records the ending of this king of Aram, Ben Harder. Chapter 8, verse 7 to 10. Chapter 8, verse 7 to 10. Elisha went to Damascus, and ben the king of Aram, was ill. When the king was told, the man of God has come all the way up here, he said to Hashem, take a gift with you and go to meet the man of God. Consult the Lord. Through him, ask him, will I recover from this illness? Hashem went to meet Elisha. They came with him as I gave 14 camel loads of all the finest wares of Damascus. He went in and stood before him and said, Your son Ben Hadar, king of Aram, has sent me to ask, Will I be recover from this illness? Elisha asked, answered, Go and say to him, You will certainly recover. Nevertheless, the Lord has revealed to me that he will in fact die. When he was sick seriously, he asked Elisha, In this time, the Lord did not show mercy on him, and he was killed by his officer, Hazel. The Lord is the Creator. He made all the things and holds all the things. He has sovereignty to show his mercy, also has authority to let us to meet difficulties. 
However, he is righteous. He has promised to keep up his people. So he must do it. Let us recognize his sovereignty and trust in his protection and his guide. Let's sing the song together. Keep on believing. Keep on believing. Sometimes the shadow get old and miss the spirit of Sometimes the clouds go heavy and darker the day. How precious to remember our Father's loving care. As He still loves His children, He always loves me. Keep on believing. Keep on believing, with all this prayer, you'll be happy day, and burden of with care. Remember God still loves you, and He says, pray. Sometimes the pain is really easy to walk alone. Forget him that's the father who stays for all his life. How many needless sorrows the faith has kept to pay. For God still loves his children and he is a saint. Take all the living and you can still pay. Take all the living. Even though God still loves us. 